Hi, I'm Carrie Murphy, media expert and CEO of Inspired Living, and you are listening to EA Interviews. EA Interviews, episode 399. Inspiration, transformation, success stories, and the imperfect action round, seven days a week. Join Mario Ficini for today's Expert Authority Effect interview. Expert Authority World, I have a treat for you today with today's guest, video branding expert, Carrie Murphy. She, I saw her a couple years ago when we were both speaking at an event and, you know, my background's in video and so I'm familiar with the behind the scenes and what people do and everyone ch ch parrots off, chirps their mouth, they're like, oh, you can go on video and do a live stream, you can do it. And it's the same crap. I have a book on it. It was the first one I wrote. So there's very few people that get my attention when it comes to video, but Carrie was one of them. And I don't want to say too much because I just want her to roll. But if you've ever thought about doing anything live stream video related and building a brand around it, she's going to cover this all right after we thank our sponsor. Every business needs a book, including yours. And that's why I'm launching my new book to help you regardless of where you think your current writing abilities are. Visit eapublishingmethodbook.com today to learn the seven steps to publish and promote your nonfiction lead and profit generating business book in eight weeks. Once again, that's eapublishingmethodbook.com. Here she is, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely Carrie Murphy. Carrie, how are you feeling today? I'm so happy to be here, Mario. Thank you. And thank you for the compliment. That was very nice. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for being authentic and real and actually saying something useful because like I said, there's so many people just, eh, 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 you can go on video. It's like, really, really? It's been <laughs> around like our entire lives. Like, tell me something more. So what do you find when you're teaching people on video and how to build a brand with it? Because I think you would agree there's a difference from making two, three videos to building a brand. Oh, no doubt about it, Mario. And so much of what I teach, you know, there's so many resources out, out there that teach the how to use video, the, the tech side of it. And by the way, your setup is very impressive, sir. But what we specialize in at Inspired Living is really teaching people how to be on camera. And that is your brand. Your brand is not who you are. It's not what you do. It's who you be. It's your core values. It's what you represent. It's what you stand for. And we get so tied up in what we look like and what we sound like that we forget that the brand, that's not what it is. And so doing a couple videos is great, but if you want to build a brand, it's so much more than that. I was uh, listening to your show and I think you even have an episode that says your brand is not your website. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Why, why yes, do you well, think so many people, oh, I have a new website, now I have a new brand. Take me through that. Well, you know, Mario, so many people think their brand is, is their assets, their logo, their colors, their fonts. And I love me all that stuff. Like I love creating beautiful brands. My first business was interior design. So I love orchestrating like beautiful things and creating experiences for people. But that is not your brand, your colors. It's like when you buy a home, as I have done recently, you know, and the first thing you want to do before you even like figure out where things go is you just want to go buy the drapes. You want to decorate, but you don't know the form and function of what you want the house to do. And as business owners, we're so quick to like go build the website, but we don't understand form and function that actually create the experience that our prospects and consumers are going to have. So it's like when they walk into your home, which is your website, you know, what's the user experience? What's the brand? What's the message? Why your home over your neighbors? You know, so your your website is very important. I know people say websites are dead. I strongly disagree, but your brand is not your logo. It's not the drapes, right? It's the core value that you bring to the consumer. I love that you are saying all of that. I agree. And I think uh, fashion and in terms of fashion and function too, because it's like, you know, this looks pretty, but if it's not serving a purpose, you know, or it's serving a purpose, but it's so ugly, you can't, can't just stand being around. It's like, I'm going to be dealing with this every day of my life. Right. Well, Mario, you have to think right now too, with the landscape that we're in right now. And I'm not saying anything against wanting to look good. I love me, you know, a good like skin filter. I like feeling good. I have a beauty line for God's sake. So it's not, it's not about not wanting to feel confident and good. 
but I will say that we are so all about like just putting lipstick on a pig. Like, let's just make it look good. Let's just show up super glam. Let's, let's do all the trends and let's do what everyone else is doing. But that's not a brand that's a fad, right? And there's a very big difference between growing a sustainable business and brand that's actually going to surpass you. At least that's my, my wish and my hope for my company. Um, and being trendy and looking like everybody else and doing what everyone else is doing. And I think for a lot of entrepreneurs, it gets very overwhelming. It's like, how do I stand out right now? I would have to agree. And I don't want to put anyone down because at the end of the day, I remember starting my company and it's literally, I grabbed paper and a pen and it's like, you know, I didn't have a website and all this cool looking stuff. It was just like, right. I we want to help someone. <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to help serve someone. How can I serve them? Here's some ideas. Here's what I think I can make doing it. Which one do I want? You know, pick one. But to your point with the filters and all of that stuff, it's, I'm going to have to bite my tongue a little bit, but why wouldn't, you know, someone just like invest in microderm or hyaluronic acid or something to like actually look <laughs> the better? The filter is a lot less expensive and less painful, Mario. And again, I'm not saying anything bad about that. What I, what I want to reiterate is that video no matter where you are in your business whether you just started or you feel like you've been a pioneer in your space that video is not going anywhere you know you and i were talking before we went live like i've been teaching this for over a decade like video's not new but how we use video is evolving like i really feel like we're in a connection economy people want to feel seen and not just seen like look at my filter, but seen as I have something to contribute. I have something to say. How do I get it out there in a way that's compelling? And I say it has to be infotaining. Like it has to be entertaining as well, which where people get, oh my God, what do I do? Take me deeper on that because I know you're on a roll right now and I want to <laughs> know more about the your process side of this and not the tech because I mean, the tech is a dime a dozen. And I, I'm, I'm a nerd. I'm a freaking nerd. I, I love the pretty Mario, stuff. I'm going to hire you to help me with tech, okay? Because that is not my zone of genius. My, my jam is really helping people get over that fear of being seen. I mean, my ideal client is over 40, primarily women who didn't grow up with a phone in front of their face. You know, I grew up, I started when I was 11 on camera as a commercial talent and print model and all of those things. So, I mean, I have through... 30 years, it's hard for me to actually put that out there, 30 years and more. And so I, what I really love doing is alleviating the ego that keeps us right from not being visible. I think women really struggle with putting themselves out there, especially as we're maturing and getting older, because we feel like we need to look a certain way. We need to tick tock. We need to lip sync. We need to do all these things. And I'm like, do you like, that's the most important thing is to do you. And yet you can't just be a talking head. There has to be emotional connection. I teach there's four C's when it comes to video. They're pretty basic, but I'd love to share them. So the Please. number one most important thing with video is, is connection, right? That you have to be able to emotionally connect through the camera lens. You're not talking at the lens. You're not talking to thousands of people. You're talking to one person at a time. You're making it personal and you're emotionally connecting. So I am as well. Like when you think about your favorite movie, I think back, I know I'm dating myself, like the Hallmark commercials. <laughs> you know, when you think about great videos, they move you to feel something, whether it's anger, passion, fear, inspiration, hope. And so as a brand owner, as a business owner, it is your job to make someone on the other side feel something. And Mario, this is where people get scared, get lost, get overwhelmed. Like, what do I say? How do I say it? Where do I start? And so you always want to start at least in my content videos, I teach start with the why start with what's in it for me. And if I may, Mario, I'd love to do a little example, please. This okay. is what I wanted so you to do. This is what I see 90% of the time. Hey, I'm Carrie Murphy, CEO of Inspired Living. And for the last three decades and over 25 years, I have been a business owner, I've been on camera, and now I can teach you how to use video to grow your business too. Okay, scene, cut. All right, now I'm gonna start it with you. <laughs> thank you, yes, thank you. All right, you're an entrepreneur. 
you carry a big vision for your life and you really want to help people. And you know that video is the number one way to do that. You're aware of that. But when it comes to how, you're so stuck in overwhelm. You're stuck in fear and judgment. And so you stay hiding instead of becoming the go-to expert that you know you're here to be. I'm Carrie Murphy. Like there's such a difference with starting with that pain or possibility in your videos, because Mario, if you only have three to eight seconds to keep and capture someone's attention using video, if you make it all about you, like they don't care, right? So you're going to quickly lose market share. Like you're going to lose that audience. But if you can start with intrigue, statistics, what's in it for me, then I'm much more likely to be like, is she talking to me? Like, that's interesting. Let me keep listening. So, and it has to be entertaining. And the way you entertain is by being emotionally connected to your words. I'm not saying you need to be an actress or an actor. That's actually the antithesis of what I teach. But if you're not connected to your mm. emo emotional being, like, then you just look like a talking head, right? So connection is number one. And then consistency. We talked about those four C's. I cannot tell you how many times someone says to me, but I tried that. No, I tried that, Carrie. I did lives and I did videos for like three months. I was consistent. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like 10 years. Like, you know, when you when you hear overnight success, right? It's usually 10 years in the making. So you have to have a consistent message and people abort their message and niche way too soon. Like they'll narrow down, they'll say, okay, this is what I'm gonna do, but they don't get instant results, which you don't get in business anyway. Um, and then they are like off to the next thing. So your audience never knows to trust you because you're constantly changing what you're saying and your messaging. So be consistent. I'm like at least six months, try a message. Okay. That's what I was going to ask you is how yeah. long before you can give up? I would say six months, at least a good six months being consistent and then having calls to action that actually make sense for what it is that you're talking about. You know, please don't say thank you at the end of your video. It is not a performance, right? Like drive them to the next thing. So videos are just a piece of a much bigger puzzle that we work with our clients on, like content strategy and sales and automation and systems. But your video the funnel. is the, the fun. Yes, the funnel, the F word we all love so much, the funnel. Um, but the video is the number one way to actually reach your people. So after you have emotional connection, you're consistent, then people like, hmm, she might know what she's talking about. You start building credibility. And the more credibility you have in the marketplace, the more people will take out their credit card to pay you to share it, right? To teach them to do the thing. So there's so many people that will put out a message for a little bit, or I say they sell the map, which means maybe they took a webinar and now they're going to regurgitate it and try to sell it. Oh, don't do that. Uh, but you know, really looking at how how you help people, starting your videos with what's in it for me, WIFM, like start with me, talk to one person at a time, don't say hey everyone, right? And remember those four C's. And if you are emotionally connected- you're What's the third one again? Credibility. Ah. So connection, consistency, that leads to credibility, that leads to conversion. The fancy okay. word for money, right? <laughs> That is fantastic. It's reminding me of the four four C's of uh, cut, color, clarity, and carrot for diamonds. Yes, I like it. Four yes. C's of uh, you know how to shine like a diamond. Ah, look at us! I like it. Mark. Branding, branding, <laughs> bling bling. Yes. So when someone's they're coming to you, I'm picturing a woman now. She wants help with this. Maybe she has a couple years expertise. Maybe it's dozens. You're past the tech stuff. And, you know, I don't want to diminish it too much. I am a freaking nerd. I do. I can completely nerd out on this stuff. Like I, I was like earlier, I was saying, yeah, I'm recording this in 4K and streaming in 1080. Not everyone does that. Not everyone can. And you need a certain setup to do that. However, at the end of the day, whatever, you still need to have a good show and connection and all that stuff. But yeah. so I just jumped forward 20 years and removed all the tech. What do you say to someone who says, okay, I trust you, Carrie. You're great. I get your process. I'm trying to do it. I'm still just nervous on camera. 
how, how do I get to this point six months down the road? I've done a couple videos. I just, I'm not comfortable. How do you set people at ease even within the framework so that they can crank these out like we do and, you know, not bad an eyelash over it? Yeah. And I will say when it comes to establishing credibility, depending on brand production value is, is big, you know, like we still shoot some high production content and then there's times I'm like, we don't need to. So it really depends on audience and branding. And so I have to say, I love the tech. I admire the tech, but when people come to me, Mario, and they've spent 20 grand on a production day with a crew, but no one taught them how to be on camera mm -hmm. and they're in tears because they can't use anything that they just shot you know it's like when someone says to me carrie i trust you i'm in this like what do i do i remind them that video is a muscle right it's a muscle that gets built over time whatever you do whatever your expertise your zone of genius took you years of experience and credentials and failing forward and figuring it out and the same thing is with video like you have to be willing to be vulnerable. You have to be willing to feel silly, to feel uncomfortable. You know, of course, everything that we ever want is outside of that comfort zone. And I often quote Brene Brown, who says, you know, you have to embrace the suck. Like embrace the suck. She calls it the effing first time, which I chuckle at because when we start something, especially as entrepreneurs, like we're visionaries, we're doers, and then we get ourselves on camera and we press record and we forget our first name. You're like, what? is wrong with me. I don't get it. I mean, I've worked with Fortune 50 speakers that are like, Carrie, I can speak at Google, at Facebook, like wherever in the world, Deloitte, you get me on camera and I don't even know what to say because it's a different energy. It's completely different from being in front of people than it is speaking through, notice I didn't say at, through a camera lens. It's a skill. Right? So you have to be willing to learn it. You have to be willing to be vulnerable, to feel uncomfortable and to build the muscle, you know, to feel the pain. It's like going to the gym and you're like, this really hurts. I don't want to go, but I'm going to go anyway, because I'm committed to looking and feeling a certain way. And video is about helping your business function a certain way. So you have to look at it. What's the long-term ROI of me getting out of my own way and committing to showing up, building relationships, building credibility and leveraging that credibility into sales. Mm, so much truth in there. I want to dive a little bit deeper with what's the difference in the energy in your experience? Cause we've both spoke on stage and we've, uh, I we're both comfortable on camera. What's your take on it and throw in a little bit of what, uh, other people have told you, you said the energy is different from stage to the camera. And I know one big thing, it's easy to interact with the audience and say, who's excited to be here, whatever, versus yeah. there's a wall behind me right now and I have to look <laughs> excited about that. And the softbox yeah. are five. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I love speaking. It's how I built the business. I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. And there is that energy, it's palpable, right? You get on stage, you feel the nerves, you see the people. And I'm like, the minute I can make the audience laugh, I'm like, all right, we're in this, we're good. You know, you have more room, you can use your body more. Like, but again, there's an energy exchange that's palpable in the room, in the space. Video, it's not that way. But I will tell you the secret, and this is so important. I've already said it, but I wanna reiterate it. When you know who you're talking to on the other side of the lens, you'll start feeling the energy that video is not about talking at someone. It's not a monologue. It's not a shtick. It's not a performance. Like you're speaking to someone. And so if you don't know that person, and let me tell you, I have been running on camera trainings for 10 years. I've had people fly in all over the world to work with my team and I, we shoot their video for the website. And Mario, I know in a millisecond, if you know who you're talking to or not, and I will cut you and I will say, who are you talking to? And I say, and they say, I don't know. I know you don't know because I can tell in your eyes and your energy, when you know who you're talking to, you will authentically show up as a human being instead of a human doing video, right? It's, they're very different mm. things. So that is my advice is know who you're talking to. And then if you're not feeling the energy, you got to cut and like get in the zone, check yourself before you wreckity wreck yourself and like get back to it. So many, so many gold nuggets in there. Thank you for sharing all of Did that. You like that? <laughs> I liked all of it because I'm like, okay, t tell me something from your perspective that I haven't heard before as well. I love, you know, 
I got a freaking show. I get international experts on here. I you don't think think I don't think I don't take notes too. And I mean, the perspective you're coming at with some of this is not mine. I mean, completely, I still help people with, you know, obviously I'm not going to be like, okay, stand there, smile like we're done. But at the same token, it's like we have two, we have two unique viewpoints on different things. There's some overlap, but at the end of the day, I mean. That's what makes us so great, right? Is that we're not teaching the same things, but we're helping people get results and you do it your that's way what and it I is. do it my way. And that's the beautiful thing about branding and don't worry about your competition because, you know, I'm learning things from you too. I'm going to use, I'm going to use the little, you know, what's it? The little clapper. <laughs> yeah. Love yeah. And, you know, um, I'll, I'll say it translates to other stuff because I'm working with uh, my clients on their books and they're like, okay, should we start with this? I'm like, who are you speaking to? You know, yes. by the time you get to the end of the book, did you actually give them some value or did you just have 150, 200 pages of like, look at me, here's all the cool stuff I've done over was, life. Was that a shameless promotion, Mario? Was that your book? It was my book and it's within reach. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm, I love it. I'm, just kidding. I'm not really shameful. I'm proud of it. I'm not shameful of it or whatever. As you should, as you should be. Absolutely. But you know, with I, everything you're really doing. I love that you're saying, you know, essentially start with the end in mind because there's so many people I see videos and, you know, it was my next question about what about the cool stuff where it's like, look at me, I have a hat or the you, you, uh, I'm pretty much already said it, but the people who are like in every freaking video, like really your energy yeah. is that of a clown 24 seven, your whole life for the last five years. But I, I know that person that you're talking about right now. And part of me feels like that's that's their brand. That's their them. brand is kind of quirky and silly and out there. And I'm okay with that. You know, I okay. think that for a lot of years, like when I started Inspired Living, I came off a lot of TV hosting, like TV Guide, E, and I was very hosty just because it was who I was. I wasn't trying to be anything I'm not. It was just, that's, I got yeah, on but there's camera. A like, hey, I know I'm host and there's a difference from hosty and like you're presenting to just like, I swear it's like, mm -hmm. sometimes I've talked to some of them and it's like, we're having a great conversation right now. I'm really honestly enjoying it. But then it's like, I'll see a video and it's like, blah, 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 blah. and I'm like, I, I see all of that as more of the attention grabber but I know there's more to them as a person and I don't see a lot of that. And I guess that's my disconnect yeah. when it's like they just put on the performance all the time. And it's like, do one video out of the last 999 where it's like, hey, I just wanted to say hi today. And you know what I mean? Yeah. I think more people can relate to that because I think there's people who go, I can't even match that. That's not me. Oh, this is such a good part of the conversation. So I teach there's five types of videos. And I also talk that when it comes to building a brand, you want to be the guide, not the hero. Mm. And that person who's constantly like, ah, and look at me and look at my life. And I'm on the beach with my laptop. And this is all me, quirky, fun, crazy all the time. Like that's not real. Right. And so you might say, oh, that's entertaining. That is her persona, right? This is her character online, but who is she really? So if she did other behind the scenes videos that were like taking off the veneer, taking off the mask and saying, Hey guys, this is who I really am. You know, I play this online, but I really want to give you the behind the scenes of my life. That's on my kids. This is what I'm doing. Her business would grow so much more. People want you to show them, right? Tips, trends, statistics, projections, give them results, be of service, but they also want to see that you're a human being that has a life, that has struggle, that has all the things that we do. I mean, that's why I used to always love two Hollywood stories because I love knowing the behind the scenes of the movie that someone didn't get or what they went through to get to where they are. That's why I have Inspired Living TV. Like I love success stories because no one has a straight line to the top. And if all you're showing is yourself at the top, people might admire you, they might envy you, but they won't work with you because they don't see themselves in your journey. They can't relate to you. They can't relate. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. I was just watching something the other day and you know, it was about a famous actress who was dating a musician for like 
a good amount of time and she goes, I didn't tell anyone because I wanted my I was rising for the movies I was doing. I wanted to be that on my own merit, not because I was attached to so and so. I was like, yeah. oh, good for you. You know, I feel like so many people are doing the opposite of just, well, I can do this and t -t 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 just whatever. I The smoke and mirrors of it all. Yeah. You know, I mean, there definitely is that. There's that influencer. You know, I just want to be connected to so-and-so. And hey, let's be honest. Like that leverage can be really great when you're starting out or you're growing or you wrote your book or you get someone amazing on your podcast. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to understand that that's not that's not like who you are, like that affiliation, right? You have to carve out your own place in the marketplace because what happens when that person's gone or what happens when that relationship is severed? Like, what are you building on your own that is sustainable and leverageable over time where you get known for what you do? And, you know, building a brand is a marathon. It's not a sprint. It takes tenacity. It takes belief. It takes conviction. You know, when I do research on brands, like I love Sarah Blakely so much because she shares her journey, right, of starting Spanx, you know, in her apartment when she was selling fax machines. But she also, when she got the first huge account with Neiman Marcus, she didn't hire someone to go in and sell it for her. She went in there herself with her DVD player, you know, her Spanx t-shirts that she, you know, ironed on herself. I think right now, Mario, we're in an instant success, like culture. Like I want it now. I want to be an influencer. I want to be a TikToker. I want, you know, and it's like, look, none of that is bad. I'm not saying, I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying like, what's the long-term plan? You know, are you going to be a fad or are you going to be a brand? And how, how does that look to you? It's that really, it's that belief in yourself, the belief in your message. And then yes, those strategic partnerships and those brand partners, when we started the podcast, like one of the first things I did was invest in being a sponsor at Lisa Nichols event. I spoke on her stages. We became friends. Susie Carter's become a friend. Allie Brown's become a friend. Like associations are amazing. Those friendships are great, but make sure they're sincere. I yeah, you didn't do it maliciously. This, right? You legit yeah. wanted to add value and you know, I, I've done similar stuff and Susie's great. I had her on the show too, I was telling you. So but, great. You know, that's the whole thing about the business. I love a you know, I wish I I joke, I wish I could have uh, done it in high school because in high school it was cheating and business it's called collaboration and it's like you know, I would have had straight A's. Yeah. <laughs> Can we just all collaborate on this test together, please? Yeah. But that's the thing. It's like you have your strengths. I have mine. Susie has hers. And it's like we, we hit, create this synergistic effect where it's like we it's literally effortless and we're getting 10 times the output to in ultimately to serve it's our fun. clients more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm all about joint ventures and brand collaborations and partners. In fact, I think, you know, when I when people ask, like, how have you built your business? I will say there's really two things. Three, I would say, but two is investing in myself, finding coaches, mentors that, you know, know what I don't know mm -hmm. and community, like investing in community, making sure that circle that you have around you is allowing you to grow instead of that tall poppy syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of that, right? Where it's like, you're constantly being shut down. People are trying to grab you and bring you down. It's like, especially women. In What's business. the name of that? Yeah. I didn't know tall the name. Tall poppy syndrome. Town poppy? Tall, tall poppy, like a, like a flower. Okay. I did not know the name. That's something I learned. I have experienced it and I'm tired of it. Right? I mean, like, stop pulling me down. Mm. Like, let me surround myself with people that are going to hold the ladder and like, be like, we can do this together. And I really believe I, it might sound a little airy fairy and Pollyanna, but I believe in my core, Mario, that there's room for all of us. There's room for all of us to share our message. Same. There's room for all of us to make an impact. You know, I was just at a retreat with some of my community members. And one of the ladies was saying that when it comes to business funding and acquisitions, there's $2.7 trillion on the sidelines right now that people are looking to invest. Like there's more money, you know, for all of us. There's money for all of us. There's wealth for all of us. And we just need to figure out our lane and how we're going to do it. And I think video kind of going back to the heart of the conversation is about understanding who you're serving, 
why you're the one to serve them. And that's like people like, I don't know. I don't know why me. It's like, you got to know why you, because if not, why you, then why don't I go work with someone else? So helping you understand your experience and your credentials and your story, that's all part, right? Of the brand that you're building, the core value that you bring to the marketplace is that and understanding. And that's what people like, because at the end of the day, I mean, if someone goes, I want to do 10 videos, your your output's going to be vastly different than someone who's just like stand there and smile. You know, <laughs> and I love that you, that. I love that you talk about the business, the funnels, the sales. See, what I'm hearing through this, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's it really has nothing to do with the video. It has to be you're, ma- you're helping make people better. I like to think so. Yeah. You know, my mission is to help people fill out what they consider their life work, you know, their zone of genius, to not wait for validation, to not wait for permission, you know, and and claim it. And I think really at the end of the day, it's empowerment. It's empowering people to get out there. And I want more people having successful businesses. Less than 12% of businesses, um, especially women-owned, will ever cross six figures and less than two percent cross seven and to me mario that's just that's not okay it's not okay and so how can i help someone else get a result and that's what we do on inspired living i am in agreement 100 percent, and i'm smirking and smiling and biting my tongue because i'm thankful i have my book because i literally wrote it in there so now there's no confusion because i clearly didn't write and print that 10 seconds before you came on but you're literally saying some of the same stuff I I do. And oh, it's just refreshing yeah. to hear because, you know, I can tell when people are just uh, whatever, but it's like, I really wholeheartedly believe in the synergistic rising tide. Everyone can win together and there really yes. is no competition. There's enough for everyone for sure. There is. And there's the thing is we compare ourselves so much that comparison analysis, paralysis analysis, this need to be perfect. I don't know where this comes from. And I guess because I have failed so much and maybe it's because I got told no a million times growing up that to me, like resistance is just a barometer of like, Watch where this. am I in my business and my life, you know? And yet for so many people that need to be perfect stops them. And I'm like, but that's not, that's not what we connect with. We don't want perfect. And there's no such thing as perfect. And I wish more people got that, Mario. So go get his book, read the book, (laughs) you know, because there is enough, there is enough, but you got to figure out like where you stand in the sea right now, right? The sea of business, the sea of messaging. There's more content online than any human can ever digest in their lifetime. So like, where are you? What's your station? What are you broadcasting? What are you getting known for? What are you committed to being the best at the world at? And how are you going to share that? And I love that you did talk about it on video because you can have, you know, the testimonials and success stories and all that. Everyone knows what they are, social proof for marketing. You can, a lot of people don't trust them anymore because they're written or, oh, so-and-so wrote that. It's real hard to argue with this video right now. (laughs) <laughs> now, yeah, you can Especially edit videos and stuff. Videos I teach like social proof. Like when you get someone else talking and you can tell when it's real, you can tell when someone's like, oh my God, that was so amazing because you're right. Written testimonials. I still think they're great, mm-hmm. but nothing will toot your horn louder, right? Than, than having else. someone else get on camera and talk about their experience with you. And then you can also use the audio for it too. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So let me ask you this real quick. Um, Real quick, who's your biggest success story? You're talking about so much good stuff, and I'm sure you have hundreds, but who's the first one that comes to mind you could talk on for a minute or two? Okay, there's two that come to mind. There's three. Oh, my God, there's so many. Okay. Right? Same uh, problem. Who, who very first came to mind was my client, Laurel Rutledge, who came from corporate America, HR, really held a huge position, um, and decided one day, like, I can't do this anymore. And she now is a career transition expert. But in 29, she came to me, she was part of my mastermind group. And she's like, girl, I hate being on camera, like capital H, do not want to do it. But I know I need to. And so in uh, 2019, she made her word for the year visibility. Mm. And Laurel committed to showing up 
And I tell you, I kid you not, like within a few months of her doing video, she got asked to host a radio show. Uh, she launched her podcast called The Rutledge Perspective. She has grown her business tremendously. I look at her now, Mario, and I'm like, who are you? Like, she's she's so amazing and she's just broken through that that fear, that feeling she had about being visible, that self-talk, and it was hard. And I know she still struggles with it, but she's more committed to showing up and serving than she is about looking good. And I think that really is the secret. You know, it's like show up to serve, do what you need to look good and feel good, but then don't make it about you. So I'm so proud of her. It was so great. And then there's Jason Gardner came to me. I do work with men too. I do love my guys. Um, he came to a, a two-day event that I was hosting and I brought him up on stage to like, you know, role play with me. <laughs> this sounds horrible. And he would say it himself. Like the statue in my front yard had more emotional connection than Jason did at the event. And I'm like, Jason, like, where are you? Like, where's your emotion? And he was just like, not happening. And so he came to me, he owns a dog food company. He had an amazing story. He has this incredible organic dog food. They told him to put his dog down. He changed the diet. The dog is amazing. Anyway, he came to me, worked with me. I was like, oh my God, who are you right now? His business doubled. He's grown his business. He understands business strategy and marketing more. And you know, this was a guy who just was afraid to show up as his authentic self because I think men struggle with needing to look good and sound good. And I don't want to emote too much. I don't want to seem silly. So those are two off the top of my head that are really amazing. Wow. Both, both inspiring, and I've I've noticed that too with uh with men and women because I work with both, um for video publishing, um whatever the case is, and I would say the men are harder to, not all of them, but it's just that sharing communication component. Yeah, well, I think men are told don't emote throughout their whole entire life, right? Don't cry, don't show this, don't show that, don't be too expressive, don't be too vulnerable. Or women, I mean, we're used to being vulnerable, but we're afraid to be. Like, I think there's yeah. two different. I think uh, both don't have the the safety of you know if the men do, it's like oh you look weak. If the women do, it's like oh here you go again. It's like <laughs> we got, you that's yeah. not healthy for that's anyone, and culture. you know. How excited are you about your new $10 million launch? I'm excited. Do you want to notify your face? Like, holy <laughs> smoke. So I got one more question for you uh, right, before sorry. we come back for the imperfect action round. And it is <gasps> yellow or black? Yellow. That's a real good spin. That thing's still going. I'm not even doing nothing. Look at that. Look at that. All right. I like it. Yeah, props. Uh, you said yellow? Yellow. Okay, we'll stop it right there. Uh, whatever it's. So this is where I just throw in a random question. Do you want something like controversial? Do you want something fun? Or maybe I'll just pick oh, something and. Give me something fun. <laughs> where would you like to travel to that you haven't before? Ooh, Italy, for sure. My family, uh, Naples, is where my mom is from originally, and. I mean, have you seen Under the Tuscan Sun? I mean, hello, who doesn't want to go to Italy? So I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to travel. And I think that's going to be maybe like the next big birthday, a little Italy excursion. Excellent. And uh, you're not going to... Hi. Uh, yeah, Italy, not bad. Hear good things about Italian. Italy, <laughs> Italy whatever. Okay. Really? Do you? Just once. Um, yes. So we're going to thank our sponsor and come back for the imperfect action round. You've heard me say every business needs a book, including yours. And it's true. And that's why I'm launching my new book at eapublishingmethodbook.com so you can learn the seven steps to publish and promote your nonfiction lead and profit generating business book in eight weeks. But you know what? Don't take my word for it. Take it from a few of my authors, like Lori. And I went from having an idea and a possibility to actually getting my book published. Or Catherine. Thank you for making my mom number one best-selling <laughs> author. Or Mary Alice. What he got done for me in three days regarding my book launch, unmanageable. John Cody. I've worked with Mario over the phone and online, and he's been very helpful in getting me where I needed to go with promoting my books. Rocio. 
There's no way in the world I would have been able to do this with somebody else. I, again, I've attempted it in the past. It didn't serve me. As a matter of fact, I ended up more frustrated than anything. So this has been a very seamless process. Adele. If you're looking for an amazing business coach, I highly recommend Mario Ficini. Or Bill Benner. Uh, I can't make a higher recommendation for Mar than to work with Mario Ficini. He has been great for, for me. And right now, I won't work with anybody else except for Mario. Hey. Their words, not mine. Visit eapublishingmethodbook.com to get your copy, and I look forward to hearing your transformation as our next video success story. Once again, that's eapublishingmethodbook.com. And we are back with the imperfect action round. Carrie, are you ready to take imperfect action? I am ready. I got story of my life. I got three questions for you. The first one is, what is the fastest path to the cash? Hmm. Authenticity. Do you want more than that? That's fine. 60 seconds okay. or less. Uh, two, right. I mean, you can say more if you want to. No, I think the more honest you are, the more authentic you are, the easier it is to stand out and to reach the right people that you actually love to serve and that love to work with you. Excellent. Number two, what is the biggest problem you see your prospects making and the fastest way for them to fix it? They have no plan. The greatest and easiest way to fix it is to create one. The leverage strategy, it's throwing spaghetti on the wall every day, hoping and praying that it sticks. Spaghetti's good. No more pasta prayer. No more pasta <laughs> prayer. That's funny. Uh, what am I just want to laugh? What I'm supposed to be doing something. There's a third question about uh, long term. What is the? I love that. I gotta say, I'm gonna borrow that. Um, I always used to say mud pasta is much better, Alfredo. Um, <laughs> third, come on, focus. You've only done it 400 times. Uh, customer lifetime value. What's the uh, best way to maximize customer lifetime value? Best way to customize, customize lifetime value. What's the best way to maximize, Great. maximize. Maximized. That's much better. There we go. Wow. <laughs> I like it. So we're so real. I love it. I think the best way to maximize lifetime value is to remember this. For every result your client gets, there's another inherent need. When I learned this, when I learned spiral marketing, that when you get a client one result, they're going to need something else. What's next? Mm. It's so much easier to keep a client that loves you longer than it is to go out and constantly get new ones. So the best way to think about that is what would be the next inherent need for my client? And you can have clients with you for years that love to pay you. Great, great insight. What, uh, yeah, that's the three. What books would you recommend to Expert Authority World? Oh my gosh. There's so many books. You know, my my Just narrow it down to the top hundred. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. You know, I always talk about the big leap with Gay Hendricks. I probably read it once a year. Just a good refresher of zone of genius and why we settle for less than that. And we settle for zone of excellence and time and all the things. Seth Godin, This Is Marketing. If you have not read that book, go read it right now. He talks about smallest viable market. I've been reading uh, Russell Brunson's Expert Authority. I just started following Russell. He talks a little fast for me, but I'm intrigued by his ethic and what he's learned and what he's built. So those are the three right now. Excellent. And where would you like people to learn more? There's so many places. Um, I have a private Facebook group where we have about 8,000 people and I'm in there live every week. It's really a community. It's Video Mastery Live. They can go check out that Facebook group. And then my website, you know, one of the questions I get asked so much is on the tech side. Carrie, what equipment should I use? How do I set up my home studio? I bring in my interior design background and it's a beautiful guide that can get you started, whether you're just starting out or you're more advanced. And that's on the homepage of our website, inspiredliving.tv, like television. Excellent. Well, Carrie, it's been an absolute pleasure. I had a lot of fun, learned a lot, and um, I'm glad we got connected further. I, I was spot on. You're a rock star. Right back at you. Thank you so much for having me. Super fun. All right, Expert Authority World, we have another great episode here today. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Oh, wait, no, I will see you on the next episode. That's what I'm saying now. I'm learning so quick here. Uh, I'll see you next time, Expert Authority World. Have a great one. God bless.
You're already the expert, but have you transformed your expertise into a tangible asset that will generate qualified leads while increasing profit for you 24 seven? And if so, how well are you promoting it? With my new book, The Expert Authority Effect Publishing Method, I take you through my process step by step. Visit eapublishingmethodbook.com today to learn the seven steps to publish and promote your nonfiction lead and profit generating business book in eight weeks. Visit eapublishingmethodbook.com to get started now. Once again, that's eapublishingmethodbook.com. Thanks for listening to today's episode. I would love to know what you enjoyed most from it. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to connect with me on my new LinkedIn. You can go to it directly at eainterviews.com forward slash LinkedIn. Once again, that's eainterviews.com forward slash LinkedIn. Lastly, check out the full eainterviews.com site for complete show notes, the full interview video experience, links to the resources we mentioned, and more. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you on the next one.